The model I'm demonstrating is the lighter, but is exactly the same technique for the smaller scamp and the larger condor. Standing at the stern, open up one of the side panels so that you can push the hinged transom into place. Don't worry about the exact positioning of this right now, that'll happen later. Repeat on both sides. The next step is to fit the centre seat, which gives your sea hopper its structural rigidity and shape. Check the spring clips are folded back into position so that they don't flap about and mess up the assembly. Also check that the wooden toggles beneath the seat are turned parallel with the strips they are screwed into. Now you're nearly ready to fit the seat, but do check that the wider edge of the seat faces aft. Unfold the seat and place either end into the C blocks inside the boat. When you're happy, force the seat down. This can require a bit of force. Make sure to always keep one hand firmly on the seat top to stop it popping up. This is the most important safety point during assembly. Keeping one hand firmly pressing down, feel under the seat to find the wooden toggles. Turn these 90 degrees. Only when these are properly turned can you release your hand from the top of the seat. Now clip the spring clips over the catches on both sides. Go to the bow and slide the bow board into place, wiggling or tapping to make sure it is firmly seated. Next, take the bow seat. Top tip. Use your hands to make sure the clips are folded back. Once you're happy the seat is located, clip over the strong seat clips. With each clip in place, the structure gets stronger. Fitting the stern seat is a repeat of the technique used for the bow seat. Don't forget to put your hands over the clips. It really does make life easier. Once this seat is in place, your boat is almost ready for rowing. It just needs the row locks, which we'll show you later. And oh, of course, the oars. I'm now going to add the outboard bracket. A quick personnel change here, as we finish off the boat to make it ready for motoring. Make sure you put the pin through the outboard bracket to secure it to the boat. Okay. You just saw us fit the outboard bracket, or as some call it, the motor mount. Now let's fit the side seats. They are marked on the underside with a P for port and an S for starboard, plus an arrow pointing to the bow. These allow you to get your weight forward when you've got an outboard clamped to the bracket. Use the stainless steel wing nuts to secure. This is a bit of a fiddle, but you'll soon get used to it. Next, Let's get the boat rigged for sailing. First, put on the rudder and the tiller. It's a good idea to haul up the rudder using the line just under the tiller and lock this in the tubular cleat. It should now be easy to slip the rudder onto the pintle. Don't forget to slip the end of the tiller through the rope loop on the outboard bracket. They call this the horse, but I'm not sure why. Don't forget to use the turn buckle to keep the tiller and rudder fixed on the outboard bracket. Take a moment to admire your handiwork. Here we're fitting together the two halves of the mast. Here's a tip. 
Always put on the mast ring at this stage and make sure you have run the two halyards through the bull's eyes at the top of the mast. It's a real nuisance if you raise the mast and then realise you've not done these things. Grab everything together and lay the mast and rigging on the boat. Next, in turn, fit the two side shrouds by fixing them on the stainless steel racks on either side of the boat. Fit them about halfway at this point with the wing nuts. You can always adjust them later when you fine tune the rig. Okay, up goes the mast. Make sure you hang on to the forestay and place the mast in the step. Then, feed the forestay downhaul through either of the eyes on the forward knee and pull tight. That's the standing rigging part done. So far, so good. Next, grab the sails and begin to fit them. Clip the main halyard into one of the bullseyes on the top of the gaff. The one closest to the mast allows you to set the full sail. The one further away is the point for the reefing option. Take the boom and clip this into the stainless steel fitting on the mast. Next, take the gaff and clip it into the mast hoop that you fitted earlier. Haul up the gaff and make fast on a cleat at the side of the mast. The main sheet is attached to the horse, runs through the bullseye at the end of the mast, and is then stored inboard. There's lots of it to allow the boom outboard when running before the wind. Please note, we don't fit a cleat for the main. We think your hand is the safest option. Now, a bit of finesse with the lanyard that draws the sail up closer to the mast. You'll soon get the hang of doing this. Too tight and the sail won't drop. Too loose and the sail will set badly. Trial and error, I'm afraid.
Here we have the daggerboard being fitted. Obviously slightly difficult on land. And then the simple line, which acts as a kicking strap. This is made fast on a cleat behind the mast. Almost there now. First, fit the jib downhaul by lacing this through the unused bullseye on the forward knee. Then, clip on the five hanks to the force stay. Once you've done that, attach the halyard. Hoist up the sail and tighten it a bit using the downhaul before fixing it to the cleat on the edge of the forward seat. Next, feed the jib sheets through the bull's eyes on either side of the boat. Notice there are jamming cleats on the edge of the centre seat. And here is a rather fine figure of eight knot to stop the jib sheets pulling through the bull's eyes. The row locks. These slot into the plastic brackets on the boat. Twist through 180 degrees to stop them popping out. A lot of sea hopper owners forget this. Then the painter, which you'll only need to do once when the boat is new. Now the important bit, the buoyancy bags. You've got three, two large ones to go under the side seats and then the third smaller to go under the forward seat. The straps are all the same length. Feed the straps through the loops on the bags and then around the side seats, tightening up on the buckles. And that's it.